Hello, and welcome to the Security Metrics Podcast. I'm Jen Stone. I'm one of the principal security analysts here at Security Metrics. And today I want to talk to you about something that I know is on a lot of people's minds because I keep getting phone calls and emails about it. What about 4.0? And specifically, if you fill out SAQs, what about the 4.0? Now, if you don't do PCI, all of that might have sounded like kind of gobbledygook, but I have the right person here to, with me today to talk about it and to help people who really uh, have this on their plate. Michael Simpson, Principal Security Analyst, Security Metrics, also my team lead. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Jen. I'm I, happy to be on the show. I know that we've we've had you on before. A lot of people know you from, from webinars and things, but I, I just want to take a brief moment and and offer your bio to people who don't know you yet. Um, experienced security analyst with a demonstrated history of helping large enterprise and higher education entities tackle their IT security and compliance challenges. Skilled in PCI DSS, HIPAA, networking, IPS, and NIST. Strong information technology professional with a background in business management. I stole all of that from LinkedIn. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> um I think one of the things that, that you and I spend most of our time doing um, when, when we're on teams together is the higher education. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our team focuses a lot on what I would call our multi-mid uh, companies. So our higher, higher education um, and also our uh, government. So a lot, a lot of our uh, state and local governments, they're also uh, level two merchants that tend to assess using the SAQs as the baseline. Right. And so for people who don't know what an SAQ is, can you describe to people who maybe don't do PCI DSS or who should be doing it and just don't know that they should be doing certain things? But briefly, what is an SAQ and how does it fit in the world of security and compliance? Yeah, so the, the PCI data security standard is a set of about 330 security controls that are designed to protect credit card information. For a lot of small merchants, it's a really big list to go through. And a lot of times, depending on their environment, most of those requirements don't even apply in their environment. So what the council's done in order to help small merchants validate their PCI compliance is they, they have created the self-assessment questionnaires or the SAQs. And what those are are a subset of the full PCI DSS standard that are specifically designed to protect specific types of payment flows. So if you have a, a merchant that maybe they have a, an analog connected terminal that their bank gave them and all they do for processing payments is you know they they get the the credit card data either in person or over the phone, and they're just using that analog connected terminal to process the payment. For them, if they go through the full PCI DSS standard, a lot of it isn't going to apply. All of the requirements surrounding network and firewall security don't apply because they have no network connection in their card environment. Um, antivirus isn't going to apply because you can't install AV on one of these bank terminals. So what they would do is they would pick the self-assessment questionnaire that fits that environment, which in this case would be in the SAQB. And the SAQB is going to handpick requirements from the full standard that specifically help to secure that type of a payment channel. So we'd be looking at, you know, how are they physically securing credit card data on paper, you know, if they're receiving it through the mail or how, um, how are they making sure that that terminal hasn't been tampered with. So it really narrows the scope of their assessment down to what really applies. So that that's how the SAQs are, uh, work and they're, they're designed mostly for our smaller merchants, um, level two through four merchants to perform so assessments. You have seen literally hundreds, maybe even into the thousands now of SAQ data flows because of, of work with yes. um, the types of entities that you were talking about. These are these are groups that may have well over 100 MIDs or or merchant IDs, right? Yes. Yeah. A lot, a lot of our groups will have between one and 200 uh, merchant accounts. And each of those merchant accounts may have, you know, either one, one or two different payment flows that they support. So we may have, you know, one merchant group that that has both an SAQ A uh, payment channel for their e-commerce and an SAQ P2PE or an SAQ B for their card present environment. 
So we, we definitely get to look at a lot of self-assessment questionnaires throughout the year. So it feels like a, a lot of people um, have made real progress over the last few years towards the, the version 3.2.1 of the SAQs. Uh, I, I know in my work, I, I've seen a lot of groups that really feel like they've got their arms around it. And now we have 4.0 coming along. So that's kind of where I would like to spend a lot of my attention right now. Let, now, first of all, when do people have to do 4.0? It's not this year, right? No, no, it's not. Um, they from the they can start doing PCI version 4.0. The the SAQs have been released, but version 3.2.1 does not is not retired until March 31st of 2024. So so you can continue to do a version 3.2.1 assessment even if you're using these self assessment questionnaires up until, you know, the end of March, 2024. After that point, version four is required. Um, but even once version four is required, we still have a little bit of lead time for the brand new requirements that have come in, in with version four. So th- I did want to talk about a point of clarity that, that I think is, is important for some of, uh, of, of the groups that are doing SAQs. And that is, what if a requirement existed in 3.2.1, and it still exists in 4.0, but maybe there's some more clarity, more more guidelines around what they mean by that. How do you think people should approach those situations? Yeah, this is, this is usually the hardest part for merchants that are doing self-assessments or using the, the self-assessment questionnaire as the basis for their QSA-validated assessment. Whenever we have one of these big shifts and the and the SAQs are revised, if there's an, a, an existing PCI requirement that the council decides, you know, we really should have this in this particular SAQ, the merchants, they don't have that lead time that they would with a brand new version 4 requirement. Um, one example of that is that the SAQA has changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the other SAQs, from version 3.2.1 to version 4, really have had seen little change. The SAQB and the P2PE, relatively unchanged. But the SAQA, there's several new requirements that have been added. Some of those are new PCI version 4.0 requirements. And those new requirements, we have until, I believe the date was 2025, to have those brand new requirements fully in place and validated. But like in the, for the SAQ-8 ASV scans, which in PCI version 3.2.1 was a requirement 11.2, um, ASV scans were not part of the SAQ-A version 3.2.1, mm-hmm. but they are for version 4. So as soon as a merchant does a version 4 assessment, those requirements that were pre-existing that have been newly added to the SAQ-A, they have to be in place right to begin with. So if you're looking at um, potentially doing a version four assessment soon, or even in the future, that's kind of where to start is looking at what are those pre-existing PCI DSS requirements that have been newly added to my SAQ Um, because those have to be in place by that March 31st, 2024 deadline when SAQ, when the version 3.2.1 SAQs are retired. Right. This episode is brought to you by the Security Metrics 2022 Guide to PCI Compliance. I personally helped with this guide and can highly recommend it to anyone going through PCI compliance. It goes through what the the requirements are and then tells you in the real world what they mean, how to meet them, recommendations from um, auditors. So uh, it's a great resource to get the fundamentals of PCI compliance. You can get it on our website, securitymetrics.com. Well, so let's look at, at some of the changes that, that you found. Existing PCI DSS requirements newly added to the SAQs with, that have no grace period. Mm-hmm. Um, what, tell, me, tell me about that more in detail. Yeah, so again, these, these are requirements that um, they're not new to PCI DSS. And, and I think the justification for why there is no grace period is if you look at if you read through 
the executive summary or, or, or the intro to all of the SAQs in version 3.2.1. And this was even prior to 3.2.1. But there's a small little statement in that uh, in the self-assessment questionnaires that say that even though we're only attesting to those requirements in the SAQ, all applicable PCI DSS controls are in place. Right. You know, so that's where if the PCI council now thinks, you know, ASV scans or vulnerability, external vulnerability scans should be done by SAQ A merchants. Um, they don't get that grace period because, because really they should have been doing them in the past, even though they weren't checking the box when they were filling out their SAQ. Right, right. So it's it, it comes down to the, the idea that the full PCI DSS, the full standard should apply to any card data environment. Any any card flow should be protected by the controls described in the standard, right? Yes. And, and I think that's, in my opinion, I think that's why the SAQA changed so dramatically versus some of the other SAQs. Because there, there really were requirements that, you know, I as a QSA was surprised were not in the standard prior to this. And even now with version four, like version four requires that e-commerce or these SAQA merchants, which typically tend to be, you know, an e-commerce merchant where they've outsourced all data capture and, and processing to PCI DSS uh, compliant third-party gateways. Um, in the past, vulnerability scans, internal or external, were not required for, for these merchants, but right. there was a risk there. You know, if someone gained access to their e-commerce server and was able to change that redirect or the change the implementation of the iframe that was used to capture the data, then even though their server never touched credit card data, it could be used as a way to gain access, unauthorized access to credit card data. So the you know, vulnerability management should have been a priority for these merchants, but it wasn't a priority in the SAQA version 321. Version four, we now have external vulnerability scans required, but internal vulnerability scans are still not part of the SAQA for version four. Right. Should they be done? Yes. In my opinion, you should be doing both internal and external vulnerability scans against your e-commerce server, um, regardless of if it's in your SAQ. Um, but version four right now is only requiring the external vulnerability scans. So this comes back to your earlier statement that um, they all... Uh, they all are um, required. You have to look at them and say, if it applies to your environment, um, these should be in place. But you only have to attest to the the certain number that the council put in the SAQ. And I think yes. some people think if it's not in the SAQ, it's not import, important. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think that's... I think it's more that the ones that are not listed there should be done um, depending on if it applies or not. Right. And and I think as a risk-based decision that the council, you know, made to decide which ones they were going to put in each of the SAQs. Um, that being said, companies really should be making that risk-based decision on their own. You know, and, and the council has been cleared all along that the PCI data security standard is, is really a, a baseline yeah. for protecting card data. It, it's not the, you know, the gold endpoint that we're trying to get to, but we, we at the very least need to do these requirements. Um, and the self-assessment questionnaires are even a lower baseline, you yes. know, so at the very, very minimum, make sure anything listed in your self-assessment questionnaire is in place um, if it applies. But then the next step, you really should be going through the full standard and saying, you know, do any of these other requirements apply in my environment or are any of these other security practices, would they be good to apply on my systems um, to further protect my customer's payment data and my environment? Um, and then beyond that, you know, as part of your risk assessment, you should be looking at, you know, outside of what PCI DSS is looking for. Are there any other, you know, risks that I face as a, as a business owner that I should be reducing, you know, are there any controls that I could put in place to further reduce the risk? And I think that the, the language that we use around it can be confusing because sometimes I'll say to an organization like the internal vulnerability scans, all right, 
uh, are you performing these? No, it's not applicable in my uh, for, to me because it's not in the SAQ. But that's not what that means. You, you don't you don't determine mm-hmm. applicability based on the SAQ. You term, determine applicability based on what's going on in your environment, right? Right. Yeah. Because there are there are some SAQA merchants um, who have fully outsourced their e-commerce environment. So, you know, there there's some where their shopping cart, they host their own shopping cart where people are selecting what they want to purchase. But then at some point, they either use a third-party iframe to collect the data or they redirect people out to a third party to collect the payment data. Some merchants, they've outsourced everything. So they they don't have any servers to scan. You know, they don't have any servers to patch or to put antivirus on. So in some situations, you know, selecting not applicable is is right in that environment. And there there wouldn't be a need to do vulnerability scans. Um, what, you know, the, the ones required in PCI version 4 and the ones that are not part of that self-assessment questionnaire. But if if your environment, if you do have systems that you need to protect, then really you should be going through and saying, you know, based on my environment, should I put this security control in place? And and if it applies in your environment, regardless of whether it's in your self-assessment questionnaire, it kind of doesn't matter. You, you should have it in place. And that's actually one of the key indicators to know if you've maybe selected the wrong self-assessment questionnaire is if you start noticing that there's a lot of security requirements that do apply in your environment that are not in your self-assessment questionnaire, it might be time to revisit those qualifying criteria questions that help a merchant decide which self-assessment self-assessment questionnaire is right for them because maybe you've selected the wrong SAQ. Right. And, and sometimes it's hard as a merchant to know what that is because they you might not have a, a strong familiarity with the data flows and the, the related technologies. So for okay. some, some merchants, they have P2PE. And, uh, and I'm going to say it again. I say it all the time. Everybody should be using P2PE. All, all everybody, anybody who can should be using P2PE. I know it's more expensive to set up. I don't care. It's going to put you in a better position. <laughs> so people who, who have gone to the trouble to do a listed, um, certified, validated, I guess is the word, P2PE solution, they probably know, hey, I have P2PE. And oh, by the way, here is my implementation manual for that. And I know all of the things about it. A lot of merchants seem to know a lot about their P2PE environment, but are a little maybe hazier and coming back to the SAQA on the e-commerce environment. Right. And so a lot of times Mm -hmm. I'll ask, you know, our small merchants, um, where is your server? Who manages your server? And they don't even know. They don't even know that. They might not even know. Is there a server? Let's go back again to the higher education maybe. Is there a university server somewhere that's managing a piece of this? Or does it entirely go to a third party? Is there any stops along the way from a university server to a um, uh, third party server? And so answering those questions is not always something that the merchant knows because they might have been presented with, hey, here's your portal, go set it up. And then what do they know, right? And so that's a, that's a chance for them to then say, okay, uh, who chose this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did it get set up? Who's in? And just really start digging because if you have, if it's entirely outsourced to a third party, you get to say it's in place because this third party gave me an attestation of compliance that says they do it. We can rely on that. We're golden. But mm-hmm. if you don't know that, or if, or if there's sometimes, well, f- I find that there is that intermediary hop from a university-based server to a third party, and they were the merchant themselves were unaware of it, and so sometimes yeah. find and if they are merchants asking the right questions from from the people who set it up or gave it to them or or, or you know interacted with them on it in some way, asking more questions right. is going to help. Which which reminds me that you know the importance of doing a, an annual scope review of your environment, because that it doesn't always stay the same either. You know, yeah. like in, in our higher education or government groups, you know, maybe there was a, a central IT group that uh, originally set up their e-commerce shopping cart. Um, 
but maybe that's changed. You know, maybe a new group has taken ownership of it or they switched out the server. Um, recently, I've noticed a lot of my uh, merchants, and I, I think this was really brought on by the, the pandemic, but even a lot of my merchants, so the universities, they've been working at reducing their scope by implementing PTPE. But last over the last couple of years, if people have been working from home more, doing more remote work, sometimes they have implemented controls that kind of break their P2PE scope. Um, so, so they're still using a P2PE device to enter the data, but now instead of having their customers come in person to make payments, they're receiving credit card payments over the phone. And if they're receiving it over like a, a soft phone, or you know some some way that brings a network into scope or a system into scope, then as they read through that qualifying criteria, they no longer qualify for the SAQ P2PE, even though they're using a P2PE terminal. So so that is something that you know this really should be every year as part of your scope review. Read through the qualifying criteria in the SAQ and and you know determine have there been any changes in my environment that would change the way I respond to these questions. Right. And I think that scoping is something that it feels like we talk about all the time, but we don't talk about it enough because people are still unclear on scope. But scope really is um, part of what helps you know what is applicable and what is not. You know, it, mm. it, if something is going to secure a vulnerability in my environment, then it's applicable. Very um, true. All right. So let's move on to new 4.0 requirements. Are there any new requirements that really kind of stuck out for you? Yeah, the, there, there's two new requirements that I think are going to affect our SAQA merchants probably more than any. I, there, there's a lot of you know new requirements and a lot of evolving requirements. One, one evolving requirement um, is, you know, PCI password security has based on NIST recommendations could be considered weak in the past. You know, they, mm -hmm. they require, you know, under version 321 is a seven character password. I would agree. So as, as technology has improved, you know, a lot of people feel that seven character passwords are just not sufficient. And it probably has been for a while now. So PCI version four has increased the length of that to 12 character passwords. So that is what we would cut, you know, what the council considers an evolving requirement. So it's, it's not really a new requirement. They're just evolving based on the threats that we face today. Right. You know, so that's an evolving, but as far as new requirements, I think, and this will affect um, our SAQA, AEP, D merchants, but there, there's two new requirements. One of them is PCI requirement 643 and a similar requirement 1161. So, and, and these, those numbers are version four numbers, obviously, since they're new requirements. But how these affect our SAQA merchants really depend on how they interact with that third-party provider. So if, if they're using um, an iframe to collect credit card data, mm -hmm. then they will be looking at requirement 1161. And a requirement 1161 deals with um, securing the HTTP headers, uh, making sure there's no unauthorized changes that could affect that iframe implementation. So this is a new requirement. There's some guidance out there on it. Um, but this is something that may take a merchant some time to implement because it does require additional technology that might not currently be in place. Right. Um, for those that are doing a redirect out to the third party, so the browser, you know, the uh, customer's browser changes from your URL over to whatever payment gateways URL. Um, there's requirement 643, and this one requires that you are maintaining an inventory of and kind of um, providing verification that any third party included scripts on that page, ha you know, there hasn't been any unauthorized changes to the scripts that are included on the page. So, so for, for third party scripts, I think that means keep scripts off the page. That is a really good way to deal with that. Keep scripts off the page. <laughs> you know, and some merchants are already doing that. Mm -hmm. Some merchants, unfortunately, you know, 
we've adware should never be not only on the payment page, but for the SAQAs on that, the site that deals with that redirect out to the third party, you know, there, there, you shouldn't have any third party scripts that have adware or other, you know, even, you know, and, and this happens a lot and you have to kind of decide from a risk decision, what's what you'd like to do, but there's a lot of third party like analytics, like Google analytics, Mm or uh, I think Adobe has one as well. Um, maybe for you, it's really important that you have those analytics on your site and that is going to be a third party include. Well, if if that's the case, then you need to be sure that you have security and controls in place that can protect that. I, I would argue that for an SAQ volume, having analytics on your page probably is just something marketing put on for (laughs) <laughs> for out of habit or overkill or just because it was included. And I, and I would question whether there is real value there for, for a group that, that is, if you're doing volume that is small enough to allow you to do an SAQ, you probably have other ways of gathering the information that you need and, and you don't need this, this big old, you know, analytics engine in, in, to tell you. Right. And, and even if you do need some analytics, maybe it can be, on your other pages, you know, maybe it yeah, doesn't have yeah. to be on that critical site. Not to dismiss the value of marketing or analytics or any of that. I understand mm-hmm. that that's really important to a lot of people. Um, but I put more weight in security and that's where I stand. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> um, let, let's do, uh, let, before we wrap up, I know that a lot of people are probably wondering, okay, you've told me this information, it's coming, it sounds big and complex. How do I prepare for this? I, I think the first thing is just to realize we still have some time. Yeah. Version four was just released. We have until, you know, March, 2020, so 2024. I know it's so you know, far away. I haven't memorized when it is yet. <laughs> I know. So, so we still have some time. I'm even, even, you know, you and I as QSAs, we cannot do a version yeah. For assessment yet because we're not allowed to until we get the official training, the training and the official training isn't happening yet so everybody yes. can just chill a little <laughs> bit yeah we have a little but, time but the council has provided you know at least the the you know version four is out and the version four saqs are out so what i would do is first make sure you are compliant to version 321 yeah and then after you're compliant to version 321 then look at any additional 321 requirements that were added to your SAQ in version four, because we have plenty of guidance on those, like the, the ASV scan requirement um, for the SAQA, they've, you know, they've added like password age requirements and password history requirements and, and, and requirements that deal with how you set up new user accounts and how you reset passwords. These are new, you know, existing requirements that we've had for years. So there's plenty of guidance out there, but they've been newly added. And those are the ones that will first need to be put in place. Right. So, you know, once you're, once you're, you know, three, two, one compliant, look at these other controls that are going to be added to version four. After you have those in place, then start looking at the brand new version four requirements and and try to get your head around, okay, how does this new requirement affect my environment? Does it apply? And if so, how can I make sure that, you know, once I get to 2024, 2025, and, and this is no longer, you know, something that's out in the future, but it's here, what can I do now to get myself into a position where when 2025 rolls around, it's a piece of cake and I've got this. Right. And and I think um, I love the idea that focus on three, two, one, and get that compliance in order first. Yeah, but then you don't get extra credit points for for jumping for ahead. No, in SAQ no, you don't. It's just but it's all four. about securing yeah. your environment. So <laughs> one of the things that I've noticed with um, three point two point one is that people have not read it. So so mm-hmm. it's and it can be. It can feel like a lot, but these SEQs, they're not that bad. Sitting and reading through it, and if you, you get to things that you don't understand, maybe somebody in the compliance group will understand it. Maybe another merchant that, maybe there are merchant groups that, that help understand, you know, the SEQs in your, in your organization. Maybe there's um, 
somebody from the IT group can come over and talk about the, the technically specific things, right? So I think mm -hmm. for me, I, I really like it when people take the time to read the words, but even if they just read the qualifying criteria. Yep, that is a big one. Read, read the qualifying criteria and realize it. Uh, how I put it recently with the one person I was helping out, you know, the qualifying criteria or not, it's not a choose your own adventure type of a scenario where you can just select one of those and go, oh, yep, this is the SAQ for me. <laughs> Every <laughs> one of those qualifying criteria have to be in, have to be yeah. affirmatively answered for you to say, I do qualify to use this SAQ to validate my PCI compliance. If you can't answer every one of those affirmatively, you need to look at a different SAQ to make sure that right. you can validate your compliance using exactly. one of those self-assessment questionnaires. Well, I sure appreciate you coming on and talking to me today about this, and, and I hope that people find it useful. Um, we'll have links that, where people can go find additional information, but in general, where's the best place if people want to find PCI information? Are, are there documents people can go to? Yeah, so the probably the first place to start is the PCI Security Standards website. Um, yeah. Under their document library, you can download all of the, they've got several version 4 documents that talk about the changes uh, from version 3.2.1 to version 4 and kind of give a high level description of these new requirements. The version 4 SEQs can be downloaded there. And then the security metrics blog, we're putting out content on version four to help people understand how version four applies in their environment. And we'll continue to provide more information um, as it becomes available. Terrific. Thanks very much. And I appreciate you joining us today. Yes. Thank you, Jen. It's my pleasure. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.